Hi, I'm Steve Casely from CBT Nuggets, and welcome to this micro nugget on project dependencies, or in other words, defining the order in which you want all of the work on your project to be completed. Setting your project dependencies defines the sequence of the work. Effectively, you define the predecessor and the successor. You can't build the roof of a house until the walls are constructed. You can't construct the walls of the house until the floor is constructed. You can't construct the floor of the house until the foundation is poured. We're defining the specific predecessor and successor tasks for all of the work that needs to be done on our project. And you may say, well, Steve, that's pretty self-evident. Probably everybody knows that you can't build the roof until you do the walls and the floor and the foundation, and you're right. But because in today's day and age, we're using software to do all of our project scheduling, we absolutely have to define all of the, re all of the dependencies because the software scheduler doesn't have the common sense that we human beings have to say, yes, roof before walls, before floor, before basement, and therefore, we as project managers need to spend a fair amount of work up front defining all of the project dependencies so that our software is going to work successfully. You could almost say creating the project dependencies is an artificial task that we make ourselves do to make our software schedulers work, but that's a fact of life. All projects or any project of any significant size is going to need software. So therefore, we need to prepare to set the sequence. We need to be prepared to define our project dependencies. But the good news is setting your project dependencies is relatively straightforward. There are four dependency types we need to be aware of. And one, the finish start, is the most common dependency type you're going to use in your project. I would suggest you're probably going to use the finish start 95 plus percent of the time may be used exclusively on your project. And the finish start is the scenario we discussed a moment ago. Task A, which is preparing the foundation, must finish before task B, putting the main floor on, can start. Predecessor must finish before successor can start. Our next dependency type is start to start. In a start to start, task B, which is the successor per se, cannot start until A starts. So you may be able to do some work on your project in parallel, or a scenario I often use this is weekly status meetings will start at the same time as the first task on the project starts. Not used a lot, but used a little bit on your project. Our next dependency is very similar. Finish, finish. Task B cannot finish until task A finishes. So again, task B is my weekly status reports. They cannot finish until the very last task on my project has finished. And between these three, I would say 100% of all your dependencies on your project will be one of finish to start, start to start or finish to start. There is a fourth type that you need to be aware of where the fourth and final dependency type is called start finish. In this scenario, B is technically defined as the successor, but B cannot finish until task A starts. Very odd scenario. I've seen it best described as Task A is a very complex, very expensive piece of machinery. Task B is preparing the project site to use this piece of machinery. We want T, task B, the preparation, to go for on as long as possible and finish only the very second that task A starts. But in my humble opinion, this fourth dependency type is not one you're going to use a lot, but you need to be aware of just for completeness. And with those four, or in my humble opinion, three types of dependencies defined, just a little bit more detail, we can refine these, we can enhance these a little bit by adding in overlaps and gaps. So in this case, I'm going to stick with the traditional finish start dependency, and I'm going to say there's a gap of plus two days. So two days after A finishes, this is the finish, 
Here's my one day, here's my two days, task B can start. Related to that, we have the ability to provide overlaps. So two days before, minus two, A finishes, B can start, and there's my two day overlap. And although I recognize that adding in overlaps and gaps will happen on your project because there will be very valid reasons why you need to have overlaps and gaps, I want to close this micro nugget with my favorite statement of keep it simple or the KISS method where we all know that KISS is keep it simple, Steve. And my statement with doing your dependencies, adding in overlaps and gaps is what makes perfect sense in planning while we are working on this project plan day in, day out for the two or three or five days of planning. All of these overlaps, all of these gaps, all of these extra twists and turns we put in our dependencies make perfect sense in planning will not be. I'm saying may, but I'm saying will not be obvious in execution, and you're going to have your project scheduling software doing things that confuse you. Where possible, keep your dependency diagrams as simple as possible, and you'll have better luck in planning, and you'll absolutely have better luck in execution. This concludes our micro nugget on project dependencies. I hope this has been informative for you, and thank you very much for viewing.